All right, everybody. Sorry about the delay here. Hope everyone can hear and see me okay. Dr. Patel here. Happy Friday. Today I am going to be going over something called exosomes. So this word exosomes has been kind of going around in the orthopedic world um, for some time now. And there's a lot of confusion about it. What exactly are exosomes? Um, what do they do? Are they magic? Can they heal you? Can they fix your arthritis or heal your Alzheimer's or get you living the life that you want to live without surgery or drugs? Well, let's dig deep. So this topic came to me because I had a patient uh, just today ask me about exosomes and I, I dug a little bit deeper into what they do uh, for the patient as well as what they don't do. Um, but I'll tell you, it's not a week that doesn't go by that a patient doesn't ask me about uh, exosomes and what they could potentially do for a musculoskeletal condition. So what are exosomes? Uh, there are a lot of companies now that are spouting these exosomes products um, that are basically injected into various areas and supposedly they're the bee's knees. They're th there are things that can actually help. Uh, what, what people are saying is that exosomes can help with healing you, uh, can reverse your arthritis, can grow your cartilage, can heal your diabetes and your Alzheimer's. I mean, this is just magic, magic stuff. It's really, really fantastic. Well, at least that's what a lot of people are saying. Um, so um, first and foremost, the word exosome uh, refers to these little pockets of information um, that our cells in our body spit out in reaction to the environment that they are around. So what does that mean? If I have an injury, if I banged my elbow or twisted my ankle, our, my local stem cells that live in that area are then going to come to that region and start dictating, okay, we have to get rid of this damaged tissue here. All right, we got to lay down the foundation for new, uh, new tissue here. And, and those stem cells really are the, the conductor of this orchestra of healing um, or are the foreman um, of this construction project, right? So that's what happens when healing takes place. How is it that stem cells actually communicate with the local environment? Well, the words that come out of that foreman's mouth those instructions, those orders that those foremen uh, bark, um, or, or the way that the, the conductor tells the, the strings and the horns to do their thing, well, that information that's spit out comes in the, in the form of these packets called exosomes. So these exosomes really are little vesicles or little pockets of information they contain growth factors, they contain chemicals, they contain um, basically little signals. Um, they contain actually RNA, uh, which is the transcription of the DNA within the cell. And basically this is all instructions for the things that that cell is trying to communicate with. So what does that mean? Well, if, if I do have an injury and, and I have some inflammation going on that's out of control, Maybe the cells in that area are going to say, hey, um, I'm gonna send out this exosome that says, let's quiet down that inflammation, right? So the theory is that these exosomes are actually helping instruct the local environment to heal and to get better. Um, and with that theory, um, there's been some pretty interesting research that has taken place and that is ongoing that talks about how to use these exosomes in order to try to treat various different conditions. Now, exosomes really, the research in exosomes so far has been primarily in the animal model, um, seeing, okay, if we have this type of injury in this animal, can we use exosomes to actually promote some level of healing? And there's some interesting uh, uh, results that we're seeing. Um, there are some areas where we are seeing some benefit for various different animal conditions. 
Um, and we are actually seeing some interesting research um, that, that is, is using the concept of an enzo exosome um, as a delivery mechanism for uh, whether it's medications or potentially even things like uh, gene therapy um, for, for various different health conditions. So what does that mean in orthopedics? Has, has there been any research in exos using exosomes for orthopedic conditions? And the answer is not really. Um, there's really been zero uh, research using exosomes for human orthopedic conditions. Um, and we don't know how this, these exosomes may or may not provide benefit or harm for orthopedic conditions in humans. Now, here's the interesting thing. These companies that have created these exosome products are claiming that these exosome products can help with knee arthritis, regrow joints, all of these crazy things, but really there's no significant research to support this. And, and why is that? Um, well, what it comes down to is how do these companies get these exosomes and, and really what are these exosomes saying, right? I said that these exosomes are um, packets of information. They're the way that stem cells and other cells communicate with each other. But what are these packets of information saying? What is, what is this communication actually saying that we're now injecting into other people? Well, these exosome products that, that these companies have, they're from donated stem cells, right? They're from donated umbilical sources or other birth products where they had the live cells at one point. They were able to extract the exosomes from them. Um, and now um, we have this, this bath of, of various different packets of information that are coming from the cells and we're injecting that into live people seeing what's going to happen. Why is that an issue? Well, we don't know what those packets are saying, right? If we have a stem cell that is floating around in a normal healthy joint, that stem cell may be communicating to its local environment in a totally different way than a stem cell that may be um, activated in an injured joint, right? If we have an injured joint, or if we have damage to a structure, then the foreman of the construction project is going to say something completely different than if that, that foreman was just there for, you know, painting the inside of the house or whatever. I, I don't know where this analogy was going, but you get my drift. Um, can there be dangerous exosomes? Well, well, yeah, potentially, right? There are exosomes that are excreted or sent out by things like cancer cells. So that's a part of the way that cancer actually propagates or moves around, um, grows, communicates with its local environment, changes other cells to cancerous cells, is by communicating through these exosomes, right? So there could be dangerous exosomes out there as well. And a, and a very big unknown is the fact that these exosomes do contain RNA um, or a way to communicate with other cells the genetic material that came from the an original stem cell. This is a big issue, right? Because we don't know how that may or may not have some genetic influence on the person that these, these exosomes are being injected into. So it's a really, really um, uh, concerning thing that we need to con uh, you know, consider when we're thinking about getting these exosome injections. We don't have research. We don't have research to say that these are safe long-term, let alone efficacious or beneficial for various different conditions. So that's very, very important thing that I want you to take home from this Facebook Live episode today is that we don't know. Exosomes may be beneficial. They could be the best thing since sliced bread, or they could be absolutely harmful um, and cause significant issues down the line, and we don't know. That is not a risk that I'm willing to take personally or a risk that I'm willing to put my patients in just for the potential of some benefit. So what does the FDA say about things like exosomes? Well, well the fact is that FDA says that these are not approved uh, things that we can be injecting. Um, exosomes um, technically do need to go through much more rigorous trials 
Um, these companies are trying to skirt the trials that are necessary for things like live stem cell products by saying that these are not live stem cells, these are the byproducts of these cells. But in actuality, this is a drug that the FDA says needs to go through um, appropriate trials to show safety and then benefit for specific indicated in, uh, uh, conditions before being allowed to be sold to the general public. Yet these companies have skirted the FDA and are selling them right now. So if you're willing to take the risk, these products are available for you. Um, unfortunately, these products have been sold um, pretty heavily and there's a lot of folks out there that are peddling them but we've got to be careful okay um, so just want to look at my comments here I have a ca comment by Eric saying is there any grant funds for stem cell treatments of the knee uh, that's a great question um, I, I think there are ongoing um, clinical trials for the knee and other orthopedic conditions as well um, the knee is one of the areas that has been the most studied when it comes to um, both PRP and things like bone marrow, stem cells, adipose, fat, uh, graft treatments, um, all have some pretty compelling data for knees specifically. Um, to see what's uh, ongoing in terms of clinical trials, I highly recommend going to the website clinicaltrials.gov. Um, and that shows you know, exactly what are all the different clinical trials that are ongoing, um, that are funded. Um, you know, NIH or various different funding sources are available on that website for you to peruse. Um, now, as far as research for needs specifically are concerned, well, going back to what I was talking about, there is zero research for exosomes. Um, at this point, there is a little bit of research for donated umbilical stem cells that are really only available outside of the country. Um, the products here in the U.S. do not contain living stem cells. Um, there is actually some pretty compelling research about bone marrow cells for knee conditions. Um, just this year, and I think I talked about this on another Facebook Live, just this year, there were two pretty robust, prominent uh, papers that were published um, coming from uh, the camp of one of our forefathers of regenerative medicine in Europe, Dr. Felipe Hernigu, um, published two papers about bone marrow cells, um, actually showed in one paper it was comparing just injecting bone marrow cells into the joint uh, versus going into the bone underneath the cartilage, which we think is a major source of knee arthritis issues. And those that were injected inside the bone um, uh, actually had some fairly significant results and real benefit, were able to avoid knee replacement surgery. Um, even going into the joint without going into the bone was beneficial, but going into the bone was even more so. And this was uh, an extended period of time of data, um, so pretty, pretty robust. The other study, which was really fascinating um, from Dr. Hernigue, also was looking at 15 years of follow-up of patients um, that had knee arthritis in both knees. They were randomized to either have one knee with a knee replacement or the other knee with bone marrow stem cell treatment um, into the bone underneath the cartilage. And with 15 years of follow-up with these patients, um, about 75% of patients that just had the stem cell treatment were actually able to avoid knee replacement in that knee, and that they were in fact satisfied with the results from that treatment. So very, very important. There is research for bone marrow cells for more advanced knee arthritis. Now where there's the most research when it comes to biologics is ultimately PRP. Um, Platelet-rich plasma has a pretty significant amount of research at this time, over 30 randomized controlled clinical trials, studies comparing PRP to hyaluronic acid gel injections, corticosteroid injections, um, placebo, saline injections, um, and, and the vast majority of these studies are showing benefit of PRP. Um, you know, there are studies that show that the cortisone can give some more short-term, quicker results, um, but when you look at the long-term, the PRP is the one that is the winner. And another great study that came out this year showed that uh, in patients retrospectively reviewed 
So looking back at patients that uh, had a knee replacement surgery, they looked at what prior treatments they had done, and those that received a PRP treatment were actually able to um, push back the necessity for a knee replacement by about five years. So really, really fantastic. This is stuff that's kind of validating the things that we've already seen anecdotally, what we've already seen in the clinic with our patients, uh, the fact that we're able to avoid knee replacement in a lot of patients, um, and we're able to slow down the progress of disease. Uh, we're able to you know, push off the need for more invasive procedures or even stabilize a joint. So we do repeat MRIs you know, a couple years after procedures and things look exactly the same because the joint has not further progressed. The joint has not gotten worse. Um, these are the things that we're seeing with these biologic treatments and, and we are getting some great results when it comes to the knees. Now, um, there do continue to be um, you know, studies looking at the knees, um, and there are studies that are funded um, so that patients don't necessarily need to pay for them. Please go to clinicaltrials.gov in order to see all the ongoing trials that are currently registered. Um, and I implore you, um, if, if somebody is telling you about exosomes, going, going back to the topic that we were originally talking about, um, ask them the research. Um, and not only the, the lab research or the animal data, um, but ask about human clinical trials. Um, ask where the data is, where are the numbers, um, and, and ask what ongoing trials there are. Um, because if this is something that is beneficial, then there should be funded trials to show that they're safe and that they're beneficial. So I hope that all made sense. Hope that cleared up the confusion about exosomes. They're not magic. Um, we don't know how beneficial they are. We don't know if they're safe. Um, so take things with a grain of salt. Please be careful. Please do your research. Please be an advocate for yourself. Um, and if you did enjoy the information that I uh, provided today, please share this. Uh, send this to everybody that you know that might be concerned, um, not only about knees, but about all these other orthopedic conditions. Um, because uh, I want to make sure that we squash the disinformation and misinformation and we spread knowledge as much as we can. Hope you all had a good day and a good week. Hope you all have a great weekend. Contact me. Um, you can reach our new website is www.fxregencenter.com and you can contact us by a DM, comment, or email um, us at info at fxregencenter.com. This has been Dr. Patel. Have a good weekend.